So the real question is, why should I work for you? Let's talk about why. The difference will be companies that attract people who are truly passionate and willing. Why? Example, this gentleman I happen to know, Jason Cole, fantastic individual, and he runs an actually pretty low-tech business. Act Media does the following thing. They do sampling in supermarkets. When you go to supermarket, they give you a piece of cheese or you know, the little cup of milk and all those things. Of course you can't employ PhDs to do the work. We all know that that is an income level and work level where you have to employ the nearly poor or poor. Next question is how do you motivate these people to deliver? Normally you send people to motivation sessions and I might, you might have been there at motivation sessions and guess what? They make you stand up. They make you shout your company name. Then you do team building. Then you do the flying fox. Monday morning comes, same performance, different day. The fact is that jumping around on a sandy beach with a nice beach ball in your hand and shouting your company name three times is not going to change anybody. It's actually a horrendous waste of money. As a matter of fact, I suggest to you the next time your company wants to do a motivation session, bring the whole company together and say to the people, how many of you want to go to the beach and how many of you want the money that it would cost to go to the beach? Most people say, give me the money, I go home. That's even more motivating. The truth is that this guy has addressed a real deep-seated human issue. Why am I alive when I die? What was my contribution? And what they do from right here, meaning it completely from the heart, they take their ladies who are not wealthy themselves, borderline poor, and they build houses for the destitute at least twice a year. And that means the following. Everybody knows that this position, this job can't pay more. We all know that. But you know what? If I can actually go out together with my team and really help humanity, me, even though I'm really poor, that is an amazing feat. And they don't do it out of cynicism. We can say, well, that's very cynical. No, 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 no. It has to come from here. So when you work for him, he will teach you the joy of giving. Very, very interesting and not a gimmick. This guy is uh, Blake Mikowski. Blake Mikowski is in shoes. So he has figured something very interesting out. Uh, ladies, I'm going to hate to break a big secret to you. Do you know that most of your shoes are overpriced? You bought the shoe, there's a price label on it, and there's a name, Malone Noblachnik, Jimmy Choo. And he's like, ah, Jimmy Choo is the shoe. You buy the shoe, you put it on, you feel good. Nothing wrong with that. But the price is too high. So what he did is the following. He said, look, I'm going to give you a very well-designed shoe, very well manufactured, and guess what? For every single pair of shoes you buy from me, well-designed, well-manufactured, and decently priced, I will give one pair of shoes to a destitute child around the world. All of a sudden, there's a huge why. When you work for the company, for Tom's, one for one, Tom's the company, you know every day why you're going to work. Yeah, we're going to make some money. Yes, we're going to sell some shoes, but it's not about the shoes anymore. There is a larger, bigger societal why attached. And ladies and gentlemen, it's still a for-profit company. Very important. So they're not, you know, not an NGO. There's a big why. Next, this guy you might know, Steve Jobs, has got a very, very simple why. I want to put a ding in the universe. Steve Jobs is known not to be the nicest leader. Leadership is not a popularity contest. If you want to be popular, don't become a leader. A leader needs to live in the future and have a better vision for humanity. That he certainly has. He has shifted all of our lives, whether we like it or not, through his technology and vision. This is why people go there, and they fight for it. They are believers. They are not employees. They are actually believers. Because he wakes up in the morning to put a ding in the universe. That's juicy. This gentleman is very interesting, too. Captain Watson. He is the gentleman you might recognize from a show called Whale Wars. He doesn't even have a product. He only has a value, and the value is you will not damage nature. If you kill animals like whales or dolphins and expanding other species, I will chase you down. And he has created product out of it, marketing, TV shows, everything. I buy his products regularly. Why? Because I want to give him money so he continues doing the good work. And his why? When he wakes up in the morning and the crews who manage ship were willing to die, literally, they sign a contract, when I die or if I die in the ship, 
not your problem, it was my choice. Think about that if your team was like that, for one simple reason. You haven't lived if you haven't found something worth dying for. That is deep. That is meaningful. So first myth that has to go, it is not only about the money. Uh, money is important, I, I grant you that. But it's not only about the money and not only about the corner office. Sorry, that was the best corner office picture I could find. Not the one I like, but that was the one I found. It's not about that anymore. The measurements have shifted. It is not about motivation. Totally wrong. Because this thing says, you know, if you just need a few pretty sayings and a few pretty retreats, you'll be out of a job pretty soon because your job can be done by a computer or a machine. So actually, it is all about purpose, really about purpose. And the difference is it's not about a nice poster on the wall. It is about what is the vision of the company? What is your contribution? Are you excited about what you're going to do, yes or no? And there has to be a real meaning. Shareholder value as a driving force is non-existent. It's a lie. It's a complete lie. So when you go back to the company, please ask your CEO, what are we doing here? And if you don't like it, make a choice. Because not, the choice will be made for you, literally. Which brings me to a very interesting guy. Have you guys heard about Zappos? Zappos, yes, no? Who's heard about Zappos? Quickly. OK, one, two, three, just a few people. Zappos has grown, again, selling shoes from $0 to be sold about nine years after the inception for $1.3 billion, selling shoes. So that is what they do. Wow, well, that's not exciting. The difference is that these people have understood culture, real culture. Their why is happiness. And it sounds kind of quaint. It's like, Roger, come on. We all know happy. They mean it. When you join their company, first of all, they will train you and they will push you and bite you and scratch you and say, that's what we want from you. And after one week of training, initial training, they will come in and at the beginning, a few years ago, they would say, if you leave now and if you don't like working here, we're okay. We're okay. You don't have to stay. We will even pay you a thousand US in cash right now to leave. Why? Because we acknowledge you took a risk. You came here. You might have gone to another interview. So please leave. Do you know that nowadays it's up to 4,000 bucks? After one week of initial training, they will say, are you really sure that you want to be here? And if not, we do love you. That's not a problem. Please, please take the $4,000 and go. Test question in your heart. If you would do that at your company, how fast would you lose half the employees? Possible? Kind of scary, isn't it? That's how they believe in their culture. It's happiness, transparency, ownership all that time. They have a call center where they trust their people so much, they don't have minimum call time. Their message is make the client happy. Longest call time. The average call center says, three minutes, KPI.